Welcome to the Information Systems for Business podcast. The main purpose of the podcast is to augment the book, Information Systems for Business, an Experiential Approach, 5th edition, by Franz Belanger, Craig Van Slyke, and Rob Crossler. The book is published by Prospect Press. I'm your host, Craig Van Slyke. This episode is for the 5th edition of the textbook. Before we get started, I wanted to give a couple of disclaimers. The podcast purposely omits many details to get to the high points of each chapter. So listening to the podcast is not a substitute for reading the book. Each episode contains my view of the most important points of each chapter. Your professor may have a different view of what's important. The podcast is solely my responsibility, so any errors are on me, not my co-authors, your professors, Prospect Press, or my employer. All right, enough with the disclaimers. Let's get to the good stuff. In this episode, we hit the high points of Chapter 3, Storing and Organizing Information. I want to remind you that this episode is for the fifth edition of the podcast. So if you're using the fourth edition, be sure to check out prior episodes. The focusing story for Chapter 3 discusses the amount of data that Facebook tracks, including a billion objects such as pages, groups, and events, over 30 billion bits of content, including posts, photos, and videos, and connections among over 3 billion active users. Facebook has to use a variety of tools to manage its massive, complex databases. You probably won't ever have to deal with databases this large and complicated, but you will almost certainly have to access data in order to do your job. Since you're going to have to use information stored in databases, it makes sense to have some understanding of what's going on behind the scenes with databases. This chapter helps you understand a common method for storing and organizing data, relational databases. Fortunately, although they seem kind of mysterious and can be very complicated, the basics are pretty easy to understand. The heart of Chapter 3 starts out with an overview of relational databases. A database is just an organized collection of data. Databases are managed by database management systems, which is a descriptive, if not very creative, name. Database management systems provide ways to create, maintain, and use databases. Although it is possible to manage data with spreadsheets, there are drawbacks to this approach for all but very simple databases. Relational databases are a better approach. Relational databases store data in the form of connected tables. We'll talk about how these connections work a little bit later. After introducing you to the basic concepts of relational databases, the chapter goes over a common method for representing the structure of databases using entity relationship diagrams. Next, Chapter 3 briefly discusses online databases, then gives a short introduction to big data. Here are the main points made in Chapter 3. Regardless of your profession, you will be dealing with data. So, it's useful to understand the basics of how data are stored and managed, even though most of you will primarily use data rather than figuring out how it should be stored and maintained. Spreadsheets are okay for really simple databases such as a simple list, but they suffer from a number of weaknesses including unnecessary data duplication, the potential for inconsistent data, such as having two different spellings for someone's name, which can be a problem if your last name has a space like mine does, difficult data retrieval and search, poor data integrity, and difficulty in integrating different data elements like customers and orders. Relational databases solve these problems by organizing data in the form of connected tables. Tables are made up of records, which are sometimes called rows, that contain fields, which are also called columns. Picture a list with one thing, like a customer, on each row, and different characteristics, like a customer ID or company name, in each column. A row-column intersection would show, for example, the company name for a specific customer. See Table 3.1 for an example. Every table in a relational database has exactly one primary key. The value of that key identifies a specific row in the table. For example, customer ID might be a primary key for a customer's table. You can identify the customer by their customer ID. Relational databases work through a cross-referencing system in which the value in a row of one table 
acts as a pointer to a specific row in a related table. The pointer is known as a foreign key. Foreign keys point to primary keys in related tables. This sounds complicated, but it's really pretty easy to understand visually. See figure 3.2 in the book. See, you do need to read the book. Database diagrams show the structure of a relational database, but don't show the data. These diagrams are useful for understanding how the different pieces of the database fit together. If you're interested in analytics, and you should be, be sure to pay particular attention to database diagrams. They're extremely useful for understanding how to retrieve the data you might need to analyze. Big data refers to data that is so large and complex that it can't be managed using traditional methods. The three V's of big data are volume, velocity, and variety. Some folks have added more V's, but we don't care about that right now. Volume refers to the amount of data being stored. Velocity refers to how quickly the data moves through a system. Variety refers to the number of different data sources and types that provide the data that needs to be stored. As you might imagine, there's a lot more to big data, but that's enough for now. Here are the big things to remember for Chapter 3. Many of you will need to understand how relational databases are structured in order to perform data analysis tasks. Relational databases are a common way to store data in a way that avoids data integrity problems. Relational databases store data in a system of interrelated tables with pointers called foreign keys pointing to the primary keys in related tables. Big data is an important emerging aspect of data management and use. All right, that's all for Chapter 3. Remember that you still need to read the chapter since the book has a lot more detail. As I've said before, we, the co-authors, worked really hard to keep the chapters short and to the point, so hopefully the reading shouldn't be too bad. I'll talk to you next time.